What's up beautiful people, welcome to Joe's Productions. In this video, I'm gonna take a quick look at the philosophical foundations of the American Revolution. Or basically, we're gonna take a look at how and why colonial attitudes about government and the individual changed in the years leading up to the American Revolution. Remember, in this early period, there's no unified opinion in the colonies about independence, or even what liberty means or what type of representative government is best. Even when the colonies got together, they were overwhelmingly focused on getting their grievances addressed and repeatedly pledged their loyalty to Britain. When shots are fired at Lexington and Concord in April of 1775, I mean, people are dying at this point, and yet, a few months later, the Olive Branch Petition was adopted by the Second Continental Congress in July of 1775. So today we're looking at what changed. You might recall the Great Awakening of the 1730s and 40s did have an impact on revolutionary thought of the time period. So this is way before all these events are taking place. The Great Awakening was an anti-elitist movement. People learned to question authority, and there was an increased emphasis on the individual. For some colonists, religion played a strong role in developing their worldview. Remember, John Winthrop helped establish the New England colonies to create this model society for the rest of the world to look up to. During the Great Awakening, the religious diversity of the colonies increased. And in some cases, religion strengthened Americans' view of themselves as a people blessed with liberty. People began to think maybe we didn't need to follow in the old ways of Europe, and in these 13 colonies, they can carve out a new path. One thing I've also already covered is that the Enlightenment ideas and philosophy inspired many American political thinkers to emphasize individual talent over hereditary privilege. Enlightenment thinking had an impact on colonial thinking and their relationship to Britain. Enlightenment thinkers began to question the divine right of kings and the notion of the monarchy exercising absolute power. Another item that began to be questioned by Enlightenment thinkers is this process where rulers would hand down power to family members. Because we know in the United States, the only royalty we recognize is this queen. Yeah, I hate this corny. So the Enlightenment inspired colonists to rethink ideas about the rights of individuals, the rights they should have as British citizens, and ideas about Republican self-government. What this means was that citizens had the right to elect representatives who would act directly on their behalf. An important idea inspiring calls for independence was the colonial belief in the superiority of Republican forms of government. That old monarchy stuff in Europe is trash. An essential component of a Republican form of government was the idea that individuals have natural rights. These rights are not given to them by the government. John Locke wrote about natural rights ordained by God. Essential to this belief is the idea that no government can take these rights away from an individual since government did not give those rights to people. Those rights are mine. Among these natural rights were life, liberty, and property. The stud muffin of the Enlightenment, Rousseau, wrote about the social contract. The purpose of government was to protect individual natural rights, and a government gets its right to exist and govern a society based on the consent of the governed. Basically, the Enlightenment said to people the purpose of government was to protect people's natural rights of life, liberty, and property. If government did not protect these rights, it could be abolished. If the view of many of the individuals meeting with one another is that the actions of the British monarchy monarchy and parliament were infringing on the colonists' political and economic rights, the move to independence makes perfect sense. Still in 1775, colonial leaders still do not have a clear consensus for independence. Some more radical colonists, members of the Sons of Liberty, do want to take this next step, but regular colonists are not sitting on the porch drinking tea reading Enlightenment thinkers. So how does this idea of independence reach the masses, the regular folk, the Joe Six-Packs of the colonies, and become a thing that more people want? Want. Enter T. Payne. Thomas Payne comes to the colonies in 1774. Unlike the T. Payne of today who drops albums with songs about drinks, love, and strippers, the historical T. Payne drops a political pamphlet in January of 1776. Common Sense, the pamphlet, made the case for independence in concise, easy-to-understand language that was heavily influenced by Enlightenment ideas. Payne argued that the colonies were being exploited by Britain. Remember, the colonies existed to basically enrich the mother country. He also states the monarchy is trash. The divine right of the monarchy was no longer acceptable in this enlightenment world that we're living in. And finally, in common sense, he also states colonial rights were being violated. Thomas Paine's common sense brought many of the ideas of Republican forms of government to the masses. T. Paine was good with them words, wrote in plain language, and broke down arguments for independence in a way that working class colonists could easily understand. As a result, the pamphlet was widely shared throughout the colonies. There's a lot of stuff happening just before 1776 and the publication of 
common sense as well in July of that same year of the Declaration of Independence. Up until June of 1776, the Second Continental Congress continued to debate independence. In June, Richard Henry Lee in the Second Continental Congress introduced a resolution calling for the colonies to state their independence. They still needed to declare independence, so the task of writing an actual declaration fell to one of the many guys who owned slaves, Thomas Jefferson. The Declaration of Independence was largely authored by Jefferson, although others did chip in. The Declaration of Independence attempted to sell the colonists on the idea of independence. TJ filled that bad boy up with loads of enlightenment ideas, social contract, natural rights, but he didn't want to get caught plagiarizing, so he replaced life, liberty, and property with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We all deserve to be happy. Another purpose of the Declaration of Independence was to try to convince other countries to support the colonial cause. Getting not only recognition, but also support from foreign nations will prove very important to the colonial movement. To achieve these goals, a long list of grievances against the king were included in the document. Basically, much of the declaration is a list of reasons why we are breaking up with Britain. This long list of grievances sought to justify the colonial cause for independence. Ideals such as those listed on the screen were some of the ideas discussed in some of these founding documents such as Common Sense and the Declaration, and ideas in these documents will not only resonate throughout American history, but will be debated and challenged even today. While many would argue the nation was founded on these ideals, even today we don't agree on, on their meaning, and definitely not everyone will get to enjoy all of these rights and freedoms. The ideas and arguments found in the Declaration and other founding documents were not intended for various groups, women, African Americans, free, or those who were enslaved, and definitely not Native Americans. But groups would use the ideals and arguments found in documents such as the Declaration of Independence in their struggle at advancing opportunities and rights in American society. The rhetoric of these founding documents will be used throughout American history. But what is important to note, throughout the 1760s and 1770s, an ideology was developing amongst colonists and there were slow steps towards independence. The colonists went from 1763 to 1776 increasingly questioning British policies to actually declaring independence by July of 1776. In our next video, I will explain the important stuff you should know about the American Revolution. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Peace.